Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So we mentioned in the previous video that there were short-term and long-term ways to control the, the process of cholesterol synthesis. And so in this video, we're going to discuss the short-term one, um, the short-term control, and that is basically going to be the covalent modification of the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase. So let's check it out. Okay, so here we have HMG-CoA reductase protein and it has no phosphate group. We can attach that phosphate group by investing some ATP and using a kinase to actually add that, uh, AT, or that phosphate on, and that's going to be the AMP activated protein kinase. And that will give us the HMG-CoA reductase with a phosphate group on it. If we wanted to remove that phosphate, we could hydrolyze it off and get rid of it. And that would be catalyzed by a phosphatase, specifically HMG-CoA reductase phosphatase. Okay, so it's going to be the phosphatase that removes the phosphate on HMG-CoA reductase. So now, what's going to go on here as far as activity? So what ends up happening here is that the reductase without the phosphate group is actually active. So let's actually put that in in uh, green here, so that's active. And adding that phosphate group actually deactivates the enzyme, so it's inactive here. It's inactive, or at least less active. So the reductase, of course, is the committed step, or the committed enzyme, um, the enzyme that catalyzes the committed step in cholesterol synthesis. So if it's active, what's going on with cholesterol synthesis? Again, misspellings, huh? Synthesis. Synthesis. <laughs> okay, so what's going on with cholesterol synthesis if this reductase is active? It's going to be active, right? Cholesterol synthesis, synthesis will be active when the committed step enzyme is active. And the opposite would be true, right? When it's inactive, cholesterol synthesis would be inactive. Okay, now what about the hormones? Um, so which hormones would activate this kinase here? There are going to be hormones that trigger the trigger the, um, the the inhibition or the slowing down of of the cholesterol synthesis. If they're going to promote the addition of this phosphate group, they're going to make it so that cholesterol synthesis is is not active. So that's going to be the uh, catabolic hormones, uh, glucagon and epinephrine. Okay, they're going to they're going to basically stimulate um, the production or of of this inactive form of the enzyme. Right, making cholesterol synthesis inactive, whereas the anabolic hormone insulin will trigger the phosphatase that removes that phosphate and allows the reductase to be active because it's anabolic. Right, so we've got an anabolic hormone here in insulin. Right, anabolic, and then these guys are catabolic. Right, so. Um, now that we've discussed that, that's a sort of overview. I mean, it is a little bit more complicated than what I just mentioned, but that should be enough for the introductory level biochemist uh, or biochemistry student. Um, I have a question here, though. What other enzyme involved with lipid metabolism, that's kind of a hint there, is deactivated by phosphorylation? Hint, fatty acid synthesis. That's a pretty huge hint, right? Um, the fatty acid synthesis enzyme is acetyl... CoA carboxylase, right? That that enzyme catalyzes the committed step of fatty acid synthesis, and that one is also deactivated by phosphorylation. And the reason why I wanted to ask that here is because oftentimes adding a phosphate group activates something. So it's not often when you you come across a situation in which adding a phosphate deactivates uh, an enzyme or makes it less active. So these are two cases in which that happens, or which that is the case. So I wanted to mention that here. Um, and sort of call back to another area of lipid metabolism. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks, and happy studying.